Hey guys, welcome to Smallmouth Crush. Today, I'm going to be breaking in my Mercury Pro XS250. And we're gonna do a quick video on how that break-in process uh, should look like and what's important to do when you're breaking in the motor. Coming up. All right, so I just got the boat back from the mechanic. And one thing I love about Mercury's is they stand behind their product. So I had a small crack um, in the head and there was a small oil leak. And we're able to track that down and really there was no way to fix that except to put a new power head on the boat. And so, you know, thankfully all that's under warranty. It was a quick repair. Mercury sent that out right away. They always take care of, uh, you know, people that purchase the product need to understand that, you know, it is a piece of equipment that can fail. It doesn't matter what motor you have. And to have someone stand behind that motor like they do at Mercury is really important for a guy like me that spends a lot of time on the water. So what I'm gonna do is break down how you're gonna need to break in. And this goes for a brand new motor or a new power head. It's real simple, but it's important to do right and so we're going to go out on the water today and show you how that's done. All right, thank you. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the jack plate is all the way down. And the motor is going to have to be tilted all the way back as well, especially when you're running. So if you look at the manual, uh, as far as the instructions to break in a motor. So the first hour, you have to allow the engine to warm up for 30 to 60 seconds, which, which is what we'll do here. We can't idle more than five minutes. You wanna run the majority of the engine around 4,000 to 5,400 RPMs. So that's approximately three quarter throttle and then change the engine speed every two minutes. So that's what we have to do the first hour, which I'm planning on doing today. Uh, make sure everything's working right and uh, whatnot. And then it says avoid trimming the outboard up beyond a vertical trim position and avoid using hydraulic jack plate to raise engine during break and cycle. And then for the next three hours, we're just gonna change speed every 10 minutes. So it's pretty basic. So let's fire it up and um, let it warm up for about 60 seconds here. All right guys, so yes, I'm on the Delaware River. I said I would never come back here, uh, but we gotta run, test the motor out here. I got a little bit idle, I'm gonna kick it up a little bit. They just don't want you to idle for longer than five minutes. I got a 10 minute idle, we'll make do. Uh, it's gonna be a little windy out there, some gusts, so it is what it is. I just gotta run it and break this thing in. So I believe for the first two hours, it's gonna use uh, double the amount of oil. So you're gonna see some smoke. That's totally fine, that's what it needs, needs to happen. And so I went ahead and made sure my reservoir was full of oil. I got a full tank of gas. You wanna have your boat loaded down again pretty much trimmed all the way down. And everything seems to be working fine so far. Okay, so I'm gonna set my alarm on my phone for one hour, my timer. And then we're basically gonna run at three quarters throttle, changing the speed every two minutes for the next hour. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. Uh -huh. 
All right, guys, I'm about a half hour into it. Uh, everything seems to be going good. It's a little breezy out here. I've been getting it up to about 5,200. 54, I can if I get a calm stretch, but uh, we got another half hour to go for that hour break in. Everything seems to be going good. Kind of in a sketchy part of Philly, though. Judging by the gang graffiti behind me. Just saying. All right, guys, that was real simple, real easy. First hour of break-ins done. Basically, I just put the boat in the water and between you know, 4,000 and 5,400 RPMs adjusted every two, two minutes. I uh, got that done. Everything seems to be working great. Now, according to this sheet, for the next three hours, I have to just change the engine speed every 10 minutes and we should be good to go. After another hour, my, my oil will go back to normal so it won't be doubling up and uh, man, I'm ready. So I'm heading to Oneida Lake for a BFL tournament next. Want to get this first hour out of the way and have confidence that everything's working. Um, you know, it was tough conditions out here on the Delaware. So one of the things you're going to want to do when you get back to the launch after your first hour of breaking is take the calling off, make sure you check in there really good to see if there's any leaks, any oil, anything that just kind of looks out of place. You want to just make sure everything was put back together and is running smooth. I was happy. I don't think that I'm going to have a problem. I just wanted to get that first hour break in and then I'll finish the rest uh, during practice uh, for the next tournament here. Uh, but I think I'm going to be good to go. Fingers crossed. All right, guys. So I know a lot of, you, a lot of my subscribers don't have, you know, a 250 Pro XS. Same braking goes for a 225 as well as a 200, I believe. But I wanted to make this video. Hopefully, I'll make uh, the tags in it searchable for other people that are trying to find, um, you know, a good instructional video on how to brake in an engine. And uh, you know, we're on the Delaware. Last time I was on the Delaware, I found that bag, that bag that was weighted with a kettlebell. Pretty spooky stuff. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna link it right now. It should pop up. Uh, click that, check out what I found on a duffel bag on the Delaware River last time I was out here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. I got some really cool tournament action coming up. And uh, leave any likes and comments below. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.